All right, so hopefully you guys have downloaded 6.0 and uh, have played around with it. Uh, we do know there's a couple minor bugs in it, and we are going to get those fixed this Friday and uh, get that out to you. But uh, in order to get started, let's take a look at all the new products that we've offered. And uh, first thing I want to take a look at is the garage components. So I'll just um, throw some slat wall up here. Uh, you'll notice that we are offering these two new snap hooks. Uh, there's a 4-inch variety and a 6-inch. Um, these are pretty standard hooks, nothing too exciting about that, but it's just kind of a single post hook. Uh, they do only work on the slat wall. They don't work on the grid wall, so keep that in mind. Uh, but it's a nice, easy uh, hook for in the garage. And then uh, we've also have sold some to some dealers where they're actually using inside the closet, like a utility closet or something like that. So that's the garage hooks. Uh, next thing I want to look at is the uh, drawers. Let's talk about the drawers a little bit. So we can now go up to a 36 inch wide tower and when I go into drawers you're going to see a couple changes here. So when I have my height option, you can see now that we have three additional sizes, giving us a total of five different heights. So when we introduced custom drawers, we saw a lot of people customizing the height of them, not so much the width. So that's why we decided to come out with three additional heights. So we now have a total of five. And these dimensions that you see here are really nominal dimensions. Uh, the six is actually six and a quarter. It's seven and a half. It's eight and three quarter. The 10 inch is actually 10 inch, and then we have a 12 and a half. And if you look at our 32 millimeter increments, the only one that we don't have is the one between the 10 and the 12. So it's just a matter of choosing the size that you want and dropping it in here. You'll see that they'll go into a 36 inch wide section now. Um, so we have that option as well. Um, the other thing about drawers um, is that when we look at our drawer box type and we go into our room options menu, here is going to be our drawer box selector here. So when I click on this icon, this is where you're going to be able to select the soft close runners that we're now offering. We're still offering the full extension, but we are coming out with that side mount soft close runner. And here's where you're going to make that selection. So you choose your box type and the drawer runner all in one swell swoop here. So we have the white full extension, the birch full extension, and then we have the white box with the soft close and the birch box with the soft close. So you got to remember to go in here to make sure that you select the right uh, drawer box. Uh, the other thing with the drawers, uh, we are increasing the thickness of the drawer bottom. We are going from an eighth inch up to a quarter inch. So you'll see those uh, coming through in any orders placed this week. You'll see uh, that change with those. Uh, with the soft close runners, we are coming out with a template for that. And in our dispatch that we sent out Friday, we just announced that we'll have one soft close template, but there's actually going to be two. So there's going to be one for 14 inch deep and one for 18 inch deep. So we'll get an announcement out later today and um, kind of announce uh, the two different soft close templates. Uh, uh, so just want to bring you guys up to speed on that. Also with the drawers, uh, when we look at our parts list here, you'll see that we did break them out into four individual SKUs. So if I take a look at this design here, I got those two drawers in it. So here's the drawer box. Here is the face. And here are your um, soft close runners and down here will be the handle. So that's something else we've changed. So you're not automatically going to get a handle. That's also going to be controlled by the room options. So keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you select a handle or the correct handle that you want for that drawer. You'll also notice that we're going to have some screws show up here on the parts list as well for handles. Some handles will still come with screws. They may be the correct ones. They may not be the correct ones. Um, but you will see the correct screw populate here on the parts list uh, when it comes to ordering screws for drawers. Uh, George asked a question about the template. It will be steel. I think they're aluminum, but yeah, it's going to be a steel one. It's not going to be plastic. 
Uh, okay, so that's kind of the drawers. Let's take a look here at panels. Um, let me go back in. Uh, we'll add a room. So when we get into our main menu, you kind of see our partitions menu has changed slightly. We broke out the hanging partitions, and this is where most of the change has happened with the hanging partition. So we broke them out into two separate categories. We have a round or radius bottom uh, panel, and then we also have a square bottom. So when I click on my round hanging panel, you'll notice that uh, we have a new option here. So you're going to see this option here. It's called milled. Um, so here's our heights for the round bottom. Uh, we have our uh, four standard heights when it comes to the hanging partitions. The new thing here is that we have an 80-inch radius bottom hanging partition. Um, we still have the options of left, right, or through drilled. Uh, but this new option here is called milled. And basically what this refers to is the back part of the panel. So our standard offering is still going to be that notch. So if you are hanging a panel off the rail, uh, you're going to get that notch. You're going to get the two little pilot holes for the bracket. So that's what we're considering standard. The next option is with cleat holes. And that's going to be uh, notified on the parts list as the letter A for the option. And you'll see that when we get into the parts list. And then if you don't want anything in the back there, no cleat holes, no uh, notch for the hang rail, uh, that's going to be the no notch option. So depending on what you're building and what you're designing, some people like to use the hang panels in the corner. Um, you know, that would really be something like no notch, where you, you're just really screwing these to the corner here. So if we're doing like a little reach-in closet um, with some floor mount panels, and we're doing something like this, this is where that no-notch type of thing comes into play. So when I look at my view here, you know, some people uh, say there's a little notch there that they don't like. Um, so that's what we're changing there as far as the hanging panels. Um, you'll also notice that if you choose the no-notch, your bracket ordering icon will default to no brackets ordering. So that's the same, that's true for both the no notch as well as the cleat holes because you won't need those. So it will default back to no bracket ordering if you choose um, version A or version B here. Uh, the square hanging partitions, uh, kind of uh, another version of a hanging panel, but it's square at the bottom. So this is something brand new for us. You can see that we're offering them in a bunch of different sizes. Uh, the reason we're doing these sizes is because they all match up with our standard height of doors. All right, so if you guys, um, you know, the way we envision this is, is kind of building upper cabinets. So I can grab some 24 inch here. I'd probably choose cleat holes and I could probably build some quick and easy upper cabinets. Uh, like in a laundry room or something like that. So I've got to remember to put my cleats in. Now it will let you put a cleat anywhere you want on this panel. Uh, some people may want to put them at the bottom for additional support, but just to make you guys aware that the cleat holes are only going to be at the very top. Uh, that might be something we look at down the road as far as uh, drilling cleat holes at the bottom of the panel. So I could build kind of like upper cabinets like this, uh, slap some doors on it. So we can now build kind of upper cabinets like this. Uh, the one thing I need to mention about the square bottom is that all the different sizes will come edge banded on the bottom automatically. The only one we won't do is the 80 inch, um, unless you tell us otherwise. I mean, these are things that we could still customize on the order form, but um, as a default, all these sizes except for the 80 will come edge banded on the bottom. Uh, the other thing with uh, upright panels is we are also 
introducing custom panels. All right, so custom panels, when I open up this category, this is going to work exactly the same way if you guys ever ordered custom shelves or drawers. So when I choose this, we're going to have these three options, the upright floor mount panel, the corner, uh, the radius hanging panel, as well as the square bottom panel. Uh, what you don't see on here is the hutch, and that's something that we have to kind of work through on our end as far as how we may want to be able to customize that because we do have the two different depths dealing with that. But uh, this works just like a custom shelf. So when I go in here and I choose an upright panel and I drop it in my design, you see that it does put the letter C on here, and I can now adjust this to any height I want. And when that goes over to the order form, that dimension will go along with it. It will get on our order form, and that's how we'll manufacture, uh, manufacture that part. So we do have an example here, uh, this design right here. This is kind of like that bonus room above a garage or attic space type closet. So sometimes you guys run into something like this. So this is kind of where that custom floor mount panel, panel really um, can help you out here. So here you can kind of see I have about a 60 inch tall wall when I choose my custom panel here and I drop it in here. It does kind of automatically size itself. It goes about one inch below your wall height. But if you wanted to drop that down even a little bit further to give them some shelf space above that, uh, we could drop it down. Uh, here's a good area to use that copy and paste feature. So I can copy that and basically paste it along the wall here. And, uh, drop some things in like that. So all these panels here are custom panels. We see that again with the letter C. The T stands for through drill panel. So uh, here's everything as far as custom panels go. When I look at my parts list, we're going to see that dimension for that. It's, uh, right now I have it at 47 and 7 eighths of an inch tall. And when I export that over to the order form, that will come over with it. And uh, that's the way we'll manufacture it. When we look at the floor mount custom panels, uh, we will edge band the top of that panel, anything under 72 inches, automatically for you. So in this case, if I'm dropping in uh, some fixed shelves here along the top, uh, personally I'd probably put like a, a fixed shelf or a, a top shelf on that to kind of clean it up. But uh, if you guys are just fixing the shelves and like uh, uh, a lot of people do, uh, this top edge will be edge banded automatically. So keep that in mind, 72 inches and under, we will automatically edge band that. Anything over that height, we can edge band it for you. You just need to let us know. And uh, once we get in the order form, I'll, um, we'll show you kind of a quick and easy way. Uh, we kind of did some changes and some improvement to our order form to help you guys with some of these things. So that's the floor mount custom panels. Um, you know, the hang panels work the same way. Um, we do have a lot of different sizes of those square bottom ones. So, um, you know, keep those in mind because they're working with our uh, standard size doors. And um, that's the custom panel. So here's an example. We did this kind of like um, Butler's Pantry. If you guys were uh, waiting to, for this to start, I had this design up here. Uh, this is all designed with kind of standard parts now. When I look at this, this is a uh, 36 or 37 inch square bottom uh, hanging partition with cleat holes where I got cleats in here. Uh, these base panels, these are 20 inch deep custom panels that we've shrunk down and we'll get the factory to cut those. So, you know, we now uh, have some more design options as far as designing and doing some more creative things like this. Uh, a little bit easier, uh, you know, I know some of you guys have done this in the past and uh, this is just going to make it a little bit easier. Uh, got a question here, will custom panels default to standard notch? Um, that's all controlled by the room options. So uh, here, um, I, I have mine at no notch, but you, I could change it to notch, I could set that as my default. So um, that's how that's going to be controlled there. Um, we can still do a custom notch, whatever size you want, and uh, that'll be communicated on the order form. 
Um, so kind of moving right along here, the pantry dividers is another item. You can kind of see it in this design. Uh, so when I go back to my design mode here, uh, we can see our vertical tray dividers. So let me pop these out here and show you where they reside within live storage. They are going to be under the doors, drawers, and baskets category. So when I open up this, you'll see your pantry uh, dividers. When I make that selection, uh, I do have an option for that where I can open up that and I have, I could do one divider up to seven dividers in a section. So, you know, traditionally, you know, on an 18-inch wide tower, you're probably only going to put two. On a 24, you put three. And a 30, you put four. But we kind of opened it up a little bit more and um, kind of allow you to kind of choose those options that way. So here's a 24-inch section. Here I'm going to drop in three. You do need to have a fixed shelf on the top and bottom. Uh, placement in live storage, you don't need those right off the bat. Um, but they will just pop in there. Um, depending on how many you pick here, it's going to automatically adjust itself to space properly. Um, the one thing here is that um, when you are placing these, the best practice, guys, is to not put them at the very top of a tower, or in this case, in the very top of this cabinet. Uh, a couple reasons for that. One is if you do have a cleat here, you're going to have to notch those uh, vertical tray dividers. Uh, to go around that cleat. The other thing is our system holes on the side of these panels, that top uh, hole is um, not consistent with everything else, so that if you do put these at the very top, you will have to trim those down by an eighth of an inch in order to fit between the two fixed shelves. So best practice is to, you know, at least drop them down maybe six inches from the very top, but you could put them at the very bottom too, um, or somewhere in the middle. Um, just I would try to not put them at the very top there. Uh, as far as the vertical tray dividers, um, they are about 22 inches tall. Um, as far as installing them, uh, we do sell these individually and they will come with uh, four steel pins. And if you guys were at the conference, we did have these on display and, and we kind of looked at those a little bit, but there is a dado on the very top and bottom edge of the tray divider and you're going to be drilling holes in the bottom fixed shelf and the top fixed shelf. And we do have a template for that. So that was one of the things we announced on Friday, the template for the vertical tray divider. So uh, if you are going to do this, um, get that template. They work with that five millimeter self-centering bit. Uh, there is a pricing glitch. Uh, we made an announcement the other day about the pricing glitch with these and this is going to be fixed on uh, the patch on Friday. Uh, when I look at my parts list, no matter how many vertical tray dividers that I have in that design, it's always showing one. So uh, in this example here, it should be showing three, uh, but it is showing one. So if you are out there selling this week, make sure that you're charging your customer accordingly. And if you are ordering them this week, make sure you take a peek at that order before you place it or your order confirmation and get the right quantity. Uh, if I do send this in, you know, I am only going to get one back. So make sure you um, take a peek at that and make sure that it's ordered correctly. And like I said, it is going to be uh, uh, fixed here in the patch on Friday. Okay, so moving along here, uh, I want to jump into hutches next. Um, So hutches, and I've just got a question here. Is there a reason why we can't place them at 20 or 24 inch deep panels? I uh, haven't t tested that yet, George, but um, that should be something we can uh, turn on. Uh, they are only coming right now as that standard size for 14 inch deep and 22 inches high. Um, and kind of depends on what we see as far as ordering, if you guys want them deeper, if you want to adjust the height, uh, things like that. So. That might be something down the road, but I will test, uh, see if we can place those on a 20 or 24 inch deep panel and um, get that corrected there with the patch. So on hutches, we made a couple changes here. Um, here we kind of have a little example here. This is actually an 18 inch uh, wide hutch, so we can do that now. Uh, when I go into kind of the design mode here, 
I can now build an 18 inch wide hutch and that'll drop in like that. Uh, I could also do a 36 inch wide hutch so if I just put one next to it here uh, I could do a 36 inch wide now that we have the 36 inch wide drawers. Uh, a couple things about the hutch is that we did do away with the drawer packs because we separated out all the drawers uh, but we do still have the hutch shelf pack so if you are building your hutches with these pre-configured uh, hutches you will get the hutch sh shelf pack if you build them manually putting in your shelves and cleats and toe kicks and things like that it won't give you that shelf pack so keep that in mind when you're building those uh, the other thing we've done is on single hutches, we introduced a hutch top. So some people wanted to put a top on single hutches, so we made that uh, deal. So I could put that on the 36 or 18 or the 24 or 30. Um, so we do have that hutch top available now. Uh, also with hutch tops, we can go into the change room options. And we can now change the color of the top if we wanted to. So we have this new icon here. It's called Top Finish. And it kind of works like the garage cabinets where we can do different color cabinets versus doors. So when I look at the top finish, I can match what's there. Or I could choose something totally different. So here we have an Arctic. And maybe licorice looks good with that. Um, so you can see in my design here that all the tops in this example turn to uh, the licorice color. The other thing with hutch tops is that we're offering two different styles. We have a flat top or what we've always had, the OG top. So kind of the difference is here, uh, the flat top's a little bit less expensive. Uh, the OG top is a little bit more. Uh, the OG top is still a two-week lead time, but the flat top is uh, still uh, it's a one-week lead time. Uh, the one thing I need to mention that if you're opening up an old design, and we'll talk about old designs uh, a little bit further in this presentation, is if you do have a double hutch with a top in it, and it's a, current, it's a design that you built prior to 6.0, make sure you go into this room options and take a look at that hutch top style that is there, because it will default to flat. That's the way it was programmed, so um, it will default to flat but you might have sold the OG top and that's what the customer is expecting. So before you place that order, open up that old design, look at what top you're planning for that double hutch and choose it accordingly. Um, okay, so jumping over to double hutches. So on the back wall here, we have a pretty big unit here. It's two 36 inch hutches side by side. So uh, this is now the double hutch. A uh, couple things, we did break out the top from that kit. So prior to 6.0, this middle partition, uh, this upper middle partition, and the top were all one skew. So we broke out the top because we're giving you just more options, different colors and different sizes. So we broke out the uh, hutch work surface and made that a separate skew. So with that being said, you know we, we have seen uh, orders come through in the past where when designing a double hutch, they forgot to put the top in it. Um, the way the old program worked was that it would default to a certain size, and that usually was a 50-50 shot as far as getting you the right top. But when you are building these hutches, especially the double hutch, you need to drop that top in there in order for it to get on the order form. Some people uh, skip that step and they forget. So I'm just kind of pointing that out now so that you guys uh, don't do that. Okay, so moving on to islands here, let me add a room here, we'll put a walk-in closet, and we'll take a look at islands. So islands, we've made some changes. Um, you'll see here that we have the two base island and the four base island. Uh, some people call it the half or the full or the single or the double, whatever you guys call it. So I'll choose the four base island. Uh, you'll see that we have a couple options here as far as widths. So, uh, you know, our standard island was always 24 inch wide openings. Um, so now we have the option of choosing anywhere from 12 up to 36 inches. We're still doing standard sizes. Um, but, you know, for example, let's say I put an 18 inch on the left side and a 30 inch on the right. 
um, when I drop this in here, actually before I drop it in there, you still have the top option whether you want to include it or not. And then we also still have all our standard um, kind of openings here as far as what you want to put in here. But the other uh, kind of improvement that we've done here is you do have the ability to design your own sections. So even though I chose 18 inch on this side and 30 inch on, on the right side, just keep in mind that the back side is going to be mirrored that. So uh, just because the front side I have you know 18 and 30, which equals a total of 48 inches, that doesn't mean I can do two 24 inches on the back. So when I make this selection as far as widths go, when it comes to the island sections, that's going to be mirrored on the back side. All right, because we're using the center partition here that's going to be one continuous piece. Uh, so getting into the island and designing it, uh, you just kind of have to back out and get into um, the main menu here. And you see that this elevation here is now the island. So a couple things here, we did correct the height of the island. The island height without the top is roughly 40 inches. Um, in the old version, it was a little bit taller. Basically, what we did was we reduced the size by taking out some of the height and the toe kick. So uh, we've corrected that. Uh, but now, now that I have this here, I can go into really any category and start drawing. So here, if I go into doors, drawers, and baskets, I could choose doors. I can... Uh, drop in some doors here on this section. I can, this is basically building like your own little custom tower. So you could design this however you want. I could drop in, you know, a big drawer here. Uh, I could drop in some other size drawers. You know, whatever you want to do, you now have that ability. So I can uh, duplicate this and, and just build the islands however I want now. Uh, this top is also controlled by that top option. So if I, you know, a lot of people like that antique white with premier doors and a chocolate pear top. So, you know, we sell quite a bit of that. So you can kind of see what you can do here with the islands. Uh, as far as parts go, um, the backing as well as the toe kicks, that's going to be one skew. Uh, these outer partitions are going to be another skew, and then if you are doing the full island, you're going to have this third skew, which is in the middle, and then all the different parts and pieces. So it's all the standard doors and drawers that we use for uh, other parts in the closet. Uh, currently, there is one small pricing glitch going on with this island, is that these outer partitions aren't pricing it correctly. Uh, it's showing one in your parts list and it should show two. So we'll get that fixed on Friday as well. Uh, why, while I'm in the uh, menu and freestanding options, we do have a new crown molding. And we call it the modern molding. It's flat. It's um, not like our traditional um, K-style type crown molding. So. Um, it's a little bit smaller than our other crown molding, um, and it comes in the same 8-foot lengths, and it works the same as the other ones. You just click it, and uh, it adds it to all the uh, upper partitions. Um, Uh, uh, the modern molding kind of goes with the um, kind of the flat panel, the modern, the uh, pillow top type front. You could probably even pair it with the shaker. So that's kind of why we're calling it the modern. It's a very um, modern type look. Uh, okay, so that kind of covers all of the different uh, new products and some changes in live storage. Um, so let's kind of take a look at what the, what's going on with the order form. So I'm going to order this pantry here that we designed. Um, you'll also notice a new feature here in the parts list is that we put the change room options on this screen as well. Uh, you know, we know that you guys are working with customers and maybe they want to see a different price. So instead of jumping back to the view screen to click on the change room options, we decided to put it up here so it'll reside up there and it acts the same way. So save you a couple clicks and make you a little bit more efficient. 
So if I was ordering this, um, you can kind of see a couple different things going on here. Um, we've got the custom height, 20 inch deep panels. Uh, here's our countertop. So if I would export this over to the order form, I'll just throw this on my desktop for now. A uh, couple things here. Um, uh, you'll probably see a multiplier of 3.6 in there. That's not correct, so you want to put yours in there. Uh, we'll get that corrected with this patch on Friday. Uh, we're also going to uh, make a little adjustment here. Um, some people have pointed out that there's no company uh, location here to put your name on the uh, ship to or the build to address. That's going to be addressed with the patch. And we're probably going to take out these few lines here and put the addresses up here to eliminate the height of this header here because we know it's pretty big and sometimes when you're searching for things you can only see a few of the items. So we're going to shrink this header down so you can see more lines there as well. So if I kind of shrink this down a little bit we can kind of see more of the order. So we still have this uh, comment line and this is really going to be mostly for overall the order. Uh, we did add this line comment column here on the right, and this is for adding comments to specific products. So earlier we were asked about uh, notches and things like that. This is a perfect way to put in a custom notch uh, size for a specific panel, uh, or if you needed edge banding on the top of a, a set of panels or something like that, you can type that in there as well. So we do have that line comment column. You will see sometimes some products will have uh, comments automatically pop up here. And for example, this was the uh, 37 inch high square bottom hanging partition where we chose option A, which was cleat hole. So you see in the part number that it puts an A on the end. And then it also adds the cleat holes here in the comment line. And that's going to help customer service and manufacturing uh, get that uh, ordered correctly. So we'll see that. Um, here's these custom 85 inch panels that we cut down for the uh, base cabinets that we did in that pantry. So here I have a total of four. They're going to be cut down to 36 and just over a half inch. Um, so we'll see that there as well. Um, as far as some other changes to the order form, if you guys ever noticed down in the lower left hand corner we have two different tabs here as far as um, kind of where the uh, information pools to populate this side. So on this page we call it the purchase order and then on this other tab when I click that, that gives us a complete list of all the products that we offer. So I think there, we're up to about 11,000 items right now. So a lot of times people want to take these item numbers and copy them over to the purchase order side. So let me show you a couple ways how to do that. And if you guys work with Excel, um, you guys probably already know this, but uh, there's really two different ways you can do this. Um, there's one called filtering and then one called finding. Um, it's really a matter of preference. They both work uh, pretty well in uh, just trying to find what you like uh, to use better. So in column B here, we have all our different products with descriptions. So if I click here, it highlights the entire cell or the entire column. You might see this uh, runtime error pop up. You could just end this. Uh, that doesn't really mean much. Uh, so the first way is what I, I like to use and it's the find feature. So after I highlight this column I can either click on these binoculars and click find. You'll see uh, a window pop up here and it's called find and replace. I can, it's asking me what do I want to find. So I can click in there and put in touch up for touch up sticks it's going to bring me to the first occurrence where it says touch up. All right, so here's all our different touch up sticks if I wanted to order those. Uh, I can then click on column A here with the part number. Um, I, I like to right click on my mouse, choose copy, jump over to the purchase order side, choose the next available cell, right click again, and hit paste. Uh, I do need to remember that I need to order one. So you got to make sure you put your quantity in there. If I go back here and I highlight that column again, 
Um, instead of clicking on the icon, I like the shortcut keys and I hit Control F. That same window pops up here and I could type in touch up stick or whatever here and it'll take me through uh, the list. Um, sometimes you have to be a little bit more specific to find what you're looking for. If you type in shelf here, um, you're going to see every different shelf that we offer. Uh, so the other way that we can kind of search for, try to find an item, is uh, with this little pull-down menu icon here. And this is a filter button. So when I click on this, we'll see a little filter screen come up here. And I can type in here, we'll do touch-up again for touch-up sticks. And when I hit return, it's going to uh, return everything every description that has the word touch-up in it. So here we have all the different touch-up sticks along with that touch-up stick applicator that we offer. So here again I can, you know, let's say I need a chocolate pair touch-up stick, I can highlight that cell, right-click, copy, jump over to the order form, choose the next available cell, right-click again, and paste it. And here I'll order one. So we've kind of opened up the order form to um, allow you to search for things on uh, the price list side. And if you need some help, uh, feel free to call myself or your regional manager and we can help you through that. Uh, next thing I want to look at, I want to jump back to live storage here and talk about opening up old designs. I kind of touched on that earlier, but let's look at an example here. So this might be uh, something that you guys open up. Uh, you will see some items turn red like this. We try to communicate that in the dispatch that went out on Friday. But uh, there are going to be some items uh, that will turn red. Um, the hanging partitions uh, will turn red as well as some of the island parts. So if you guys have an old design with an island, um, you may see some, some of the island parts turn red. So. Um, we can't order it this way, so we do need to correct this. And what I would suggest you guys doing is opening up an old design. And if you do see these uh, invalid parts that are showing in red, the first thing I would do is clone the room. So here I can go to room, clone room, make sure I clone the room with the products in it, hit OK. We'll see another room added, and that's exactly what we're looking at here. So this is the clone room, and then it's just a matter of going in there and fixing it. So here on my left wall, we can see the two panels in the corner. Um, the reason I like to clone it is after I delete this one, you know, that section, anything that's connected to it is going to go away as well. So I can always go back to the original design to see what I had in that space. So now I can go in here. That was a round bottom. Now I have the option of choosing the milled option here and getting it corrected. So here I would choose, that was actually a 60 inch. Uh, here I can use a through drilled, um, no notch. Uh, I don't want anything back there because I'm just going to screw that panel to the wall and uh, drop that in there. And then um, hopefully I remembered correctly, and that was a double hang section there, and I could drop that in there. So um, keep in mind that if you do need to correct some designs, uh, I would clone it first just so that you can go back to the original one, and then when you go to order it, make sure you're ordering the clone room. After I get this corrected, I'd probably delete the original room there so I have the, the new one there. Um, so that's opening up old designs. Uh, also, I want to take this time, we are working on a price book. I know some of you guys want a price book. Um, we're very close to having it completed. We're kind of midway through the edit phase right now. So fingers crossed we have something by the end of the week or early next week, and uh, we'll get that out to you sooner. Uh, let's see. All right, so I've got a question here. Uh, using the new order form, new custom square panels, quantity one or three, is that okay? Order form doesn't show as invalid. That's correct. So uh, on custom panels, you can order a single panel. You're going to pay a little bit more for it, 
But when it comes to the custom panels, just like custom shelves, you can order one, two, three. Uh, we sell those individually because they are customized. All right, so that kind of concludes this. I'm going to uh, open it up for questions, and we'll kind of start at the top of the list and work our way down.